Hey guys, it's April. This is day five and I said I was going to do boxes and I kind of sort of am doing some boxes and some wraps. Um, and these are for your candy bar treats that you give away this year. We, you are going to need a full size candy bar like a, a Hershey's, this is a cookies and cream, you can use whatever, but it's just a regular full size candy bar. And then you're going to need any scrap. This is a six by six square, I believe it was. Um, most people use fleece, but all I had was white. So I'm going to do two versions um, and see how they come out. Um, but that's all you're going to need. I'm, you can sew this if you prefer. And all you're going to do if you're sewing is you're going to flip this wrong sides together. And then you're just going to sew a seam or serge a seam, uh, zigzag, whatever. And then turn it right side out. Okay. Um, but for no sew, if you don't want to sew, you can use some heat and bond. This is a hem bonder. And I'm just cutting off a piece long enough to go down that seam. I don't want it to overhang in any way because you'll get it sticky everywhere because it's sticky. Then I'm just going to kind of loop this and make a roll. And I'm going to lay that right on that tape. Actually that tape is a little wide. I'm going to cut that in half. I'm just going to because I don't want it to stick that much. So if you've got the wide, let me just start over here. Let me just tear it. I'm gonna fold it in half two or three times. We're just gonna snip it. So if yours is too wide, you can do that same thing. I'll use that as well. Sewing to me is a little bit easier than this, um, but. I know a lot of people don't sew, so I wanted to have something that was a no-sew project for you guys. I'm just going to snip it off. Okay, so now I have that in there because I want to keep that seam allowance. I want to have enough space. I'm just going to roll that over, okay, just like that. So I've got my seam tape, as you can see, I've got my seam tape right there, and then I've got this folded right over on that edge. And then I'm going to fold over my Teflon because I don't want it to get sticky on my little mini. And then I've got this on the second heat setting just because I'm using a Teflon sheet and everything else. You want to just heat it, I don't know, 15, 20 seconds, maybe even 30. I don't even remember what the instructions say. It's been so long since... Um, I've done it. Oh, it says place and hold for three seconds. <laughs> so, should be done. And it is. I'm just going to let that cool. So you're going to have a little tube like that. I'm just going to kind of get that fold out of it. So now I have a little tube here. I'm going to do the same thing with this piece. Like I said, you can see that's not perfectly square. doesn't matter. Not going to hurt anything. I want the stretch to be that way, though. Totally up to you on that, too. I'm just going to... That, that way I can get it on my candy bar with the stretch. I've got some fabric from that there on it. And I'm just going to run this down this seam and cut this off. So I'm just going to fold it over. Let's fold it over right there. I'm going to bring that heat bond right in here on that edge. And then I'm just going to bring this up right here. Making my little tube. I'm going to fold that over. And again, I'm going to press it. And that's really thick fabric. I don't know that three seconds will do it. It might. Do what works for you. I thought about ironing on some infusible inks, but I think it would melt that fleece because of the high temp you have to use. And I may still just add some red dots or something on it just to give it some interest. We'll see. We'll see how it comes out. And you see that sticky squished out, and that's why I use that Teflon sheet. So we just want that a little tube. That's all you want. 
Okay, and now we're going to put this away out of our way. I'm going to turn off my mini and I'm going to get my paper and we'll get started putting these together. Okay, so now I have all of my pieces cut. Now I cut a piece of the Cricut cardstock in white. And for this one, I am using, oops, I got a spool ribbon caught up there. Sorry about that. I'm using Echo Parks. Um, this is by Lori Whitlock. I love winter. Um, so I am using this paper pack. I got this off Amazon. It is still available. There's a link for Amazon down below. Just type in um, I Love Winter by Lori Whitlock, and it's the uh, 12 by 12 paper. And it is a little stiff. It's a little harder to work with. So all I did was kind of just kind of pull it in because you don't need any score lines. You really don't want any score lines because of the way the candy bar is shaped, and it, it won't fit well if you mash it completely flat. So all I'm going to do is run, and I just had my tape run out. Where did my little Tombow go? There he is. I have my little tape runner right here, um, and I'm just going to run a strip of adhesive. Some of times it'll stick on there, sometimes it won't, so I'm just going to run some right in the middle, and that's just to hold my bar in place. I'm just going to try to center that up right in there. Now, in this file, you've got two sheets. One is white and one is red. The red is to cut your fabric if you want to use your maker to cut your fabric or just to remind you what size to cut your fabric. Um, the white one is for your candy wrapper. Now, I am going to be crimping mine so it is about an inch longer. If you don't want to crimp it, you can change this to, um, I believe it's five and a half inch and then it will come right here at these bands on your candy bar um, and you won't have the bottoms but I plan to crimp mine so that's what I'm going to do I'm just going to kind of fold that over and I am before I do that I want to run some adhesive I'm going to tuck that right along I could move this out of my way now that we're done with it oh yeah that will help just going to run some adhesive along that side. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to tuck right there and run some down this side. All right. And now I'm going to fold that side over. Just going to run adhesive all the way down this back side. And I'm just going to put a touch in the middle just to kind of hold it down in place for me. And I'm going to pull this other side over. And we're going to stick that down. And I got adhesive on that side. I started on that side. That's why. I grab my dummy eraser. I'll get it later. I have a gummy eraser and it'll take that off. Okay. So now we have that. And now I'm just going to mash those edges. And you can do that too. You don't have to crimp. You can do it this way, or you can change it and have it come right to your bands. And I'm just going to mash that one down as well. I have got a crimper. Now, I got this off of Amazon. I've had it for a while. Um, you may or may not be able to get one. You can look on there. But this is a Marvy. And I'm just going to twist it right up to the base of my bar, and then I'm going to release it. And all it does is put a little crimp in there. And that top one is not going to show as much as the bottom because I gave myself more space at the bottom. Just going to take it right up to the candy bar. And then you can see how it crimps that edge. Now you can also get that kind of edge by putting it on a scoring board or something deep where you can score it and get it. And that won't be exact, but you can get a little bit of a score going on there. I'm just going to do that one really quick. And you can see, just kind of crips it and gives it that little professional look. And if you want to trim yours off, you can, but I'm going to leave that one on there. And this is going to be the top for me. Then we're going to get our fabric. Let's go ahead and wrap another bar. Let's do two at a time. Why not? Right? Just so you guys can see the difference. Now, all these little pieces, I put pieces in there. You can swap those out for whatever you want. 
I swapped out the little round dots for the cheeks um, with a punch from Stampin' Up. This is an old punch. I think it's Blooms or Petals or something like that. I think it's still available, but I'm just using that piece out of it if my stamp pad doesn't work. I, I'm, I haven't decided yet if I want to use my stamp pad or if I want to um, use the paper, but and I know I'm not going to use the buttons I put in the file. Now, if you do it this way, you can do it this way. And like I said, this you don't even have to change the side. And that will come out like that when you wrap it so that the ends are sticking out. You can do it that way. Or you can turn it this way like I am. And just going to run some adhesive to hold my candy bar right there. This is Cricut card stock, so it's a little easier to work with. It's not as thick and heavy. I'm going to run it adhesive down this side, down this side, and then we're going to run it down this side. And I'm just going to fold it over and stick it down. Nothing, nothing too strenuous. And then we're going to, oops, out of adhesive. Let me grab another. This is from scrapbook.com. Same difference. Just going to run that in. Just like so. Tape it down. Right. And then I'm just going to squeeze the ends. And again, I'm going to crimp mine. Just going to place it in. Has to be straight to go in there. There we go. And bring it up to the candy bar. It's a little crooked there. Pop that out. So now we have that, and that's going to be my top there. I got off a little bit on the cardstock. You can see if that happens to you, just go in and nip it off. Not going to hurt a thing. So now we have both of our candy bars done. And I'm going to use the white on this and the plaid on this one. So if you've got yours, I'm just going to take and roll this up maybe twice. And you can stitch or whatever. You don't really need to. It'll, it'll work itself out. I'm going to put my seam to the back. That might be a little wide for what I want, but we're going to try it. And then I'm just going to place it right over my candy bar. Make sure it fits. Got my candy bar right there. Okay. And then I'm just going to run a strip of adhesive right here and right here. So any little scrap of fabric that you have can make use of it. I'm just going to give it a little stick. You just want it to stay on there. It doesn't have to be a big stick. Okay, and I'm going to get a piece of ribbon. This ribbon might be a little wide for this, but I'm going to try it. It's been a while since I made any of these. They were really, really big about 10 years ago, I guess. Just going to Put my ribbon, and I got this ribbon at Hobby Lobby in the Christmas section, double spool. Got my 40% off of it, so super, super good deal on that. And I'm just going to bring my ribbon on there. And you can use twine on here too, yarn, whatever you want to use. If you want to get that puffed out, you can put a little piece of wadded up paper or something right there in there to puff that hat up a little bit more. I'm just going to tie that really, really, really tight. Super, super tight. Tie it in a knot. And I always get more ribbon than I need. I always do. Just going to trim it off. Then we're going to come up here to the top. 
Let me kind of open this guy up right here. And you're just going to kind of fringe it out. I need to clean all the sticky off my scissors. You're just going to cut little strips. And they don't have to be perfect or exact. You're just going to make little strips out of it, fold them down. He doesn't want to cooperate. There we go. I'm going to cut that. And this is the seam where we had our heat bond. I'm just going to snip right in there. And that one's going to be a little bit stiff and it's going to hang up, but that's okay. And then just cut two at a time here. There you go. And these don't fluff out as much as the others do, but that's okay. That's where my seam, my heat bond is. I'm just going to clip it again. So we got a little bit of flop going on. You can see that there. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to use that as my scarf. And I'm just going to tie that around. as much of the color on the top as I can. Just tie it like that. And of course mine doesn't want to lay properly, but there we go. Just going to pull it, get my color to the front, and then you can trim this off any way you want. Uh, I think right about there is good. And this fabric does fray a little bit. You may have fabric that frays. That's not going to hurt anything. You can put some fray check on it if it bothers you. And then I'm just going to fringe out the bottom. Just for a little added detail. How cute is this? We're going to pop over here and we're going to get this one and we're going to do the same thing. This one is the fleece. I'm just going to kind of roll that up. The patterned fleeces are really, really cute for this, guys. I didn't have any in my stash and I haven't gone to the store, so I'm using what I have. Yay! And I will probably speed through parts of the video so you guys don't have to watch that twice. And you can tack that down if you want. It's going to stay once you put it on your candy bar. I'm trying to get some of the fibers from that other fabric off of there. Now we're just going to put the seam to the back again and we're just going to slip it right over 
right over the top. I almost dropped my candy bar. Okay. And this one's stretchy. You may or may not want to put the sticky on there. Um, you can use a glue dot, whatever. And with this fleece, I am going to use a glue dot because it can be a little tricky. Just going to grab one stick. Here and stick. That way it won't wiggle and shimmy off here when we're done. And again, I'm just going to use a piece of the same fabric for my scarf because it will stretch. And then you can fray the ends or not fray the ends. And I think with this one, I'm not going to, but I am going to cut off that salvage edge. I don't know. Maybe I will fringe it. Let's see. Not too bad. Sometimes it can get really fuzzy and come up hard on you. And that's what it's trying to do here. See, yeah. So I'm going to choose not to fringe this or just do two. This is all thinner on this end. There we go. That's good enough. Okay, now we're ready to decorate it and put our little pieces on. I'm going to use art glitter glue and I'm going to start with the eyeballs and just put a touch right there. And I did not use all of the face pieces either. So I got his eyeballs, and one of my pieces didn't cut well. But I'm still going to use it. It won't hurt anything. I'm just going to put a little glue on each end of that little mouthpiece there. And you may need to scoot down your... Actually, I should have... I'm going to pull that up. I should have put my cheek pieces down first. I think that I am going to use these verses. Still had some glue there, so it's going to stick for me. Versus regular circles or stamping, kind of. How stinking cute! And then we're going to use this little nose. And you can get most everything out of your scraps with this. How cute. Let's go ahead and do this face. Oops. Maybe. There they are. Just eyeballs. Doesn't take a lot of glue. And your kids can help with this too. They'll have fun making the, the snowman. And they can get little different little expressions with them. Placing their eyes. Let's get those cheeks. And this mouthpiece. Can see mine didn't cut quite right, but that's okay. I can still use it. It'll still look like a smile. Just like that. And then we have to put our buttons on. And 
and I am using some of the wood buttons from Close to My Heart. I'm just going to dump a few out here. They've got little stitches and things like that on them. They're really cute. You can use art glitter glue for these, or you can use a glue dot. Totally up to you. They'll stick perfectly fine. I'm trying to get some different ones here. Let's go with the heart that has four holes in it. That one had two. Mm, yeah. That one, and let's do a plain round one. I don't know. I like the stitches. How stinking cute are those? Cute little favors. You can do these for the class kids or the kids uh, can do them and pass them out to their friends on the bus. All sorts of things. Let's just try and figure out which buttons I want. And I guess I'll use a glue dot just so we can show that you can use both. Oops, don't want that in there. Just going to stick my buttons right onto the glue dots. There's one. Like so. And then you can just press them on. So super simple, super easy project for the kids. And it really does go pretty quick. So I hope you guys enjoyed this for the free file um, on wrapping days um, for sweet treats. And uh, I will move on and we will start project number two, which will be for one-time supporters and monthly supporters, day five. Okay, guys, we are back. Um, I went ahead and did some prep just so that this would go a little bit faster. Um, you're going to need some ribbon, and I cut mine about 18 inches. I don't know if that's what I need yet or not, but that is what I cut. And this is a print and cut piece that's in your file. Now, you can unflatten it and cut it out of a pattern paper, and that will work just fine. But I found this image in Design Space, and it was a print and cut, and I decided that I would weld two together so that we could use these on the little treat bags. Um, I got these at Hobby Lobby um, in the bakery section. Over, They got them in two different places, I, um, but I bought these over in the bakery section. Um, they're like $2.99. They put them on sale frequently, so you can get them for a buck and a half, and these will do tons. Then you're going to need some Hershey Nuggets, and I was looking at the photo on the front and I thought these were wrapped in gold paper so I just grabbed them however they're in a more of a coppery color so I'm going to use them anyway um, but I think they would look better if they were gold or silver but totally up to you it, they're all going to be different flavors different colors just pick papers that will match um, but this says flying reindeer brand and I thought that that would be really cute but we don't want to just stick those in the treat bags. You're going to have some papers like this in there too. Now, this is discontinued. I don't know how long I've had this. I just found it in my stash. And I thought, I need to use that paper. Um, and this is Sugar and Spice Studio Magical Christmas. If you happen to find some in an, on Etsy or eBay or something, you might find it there. But generally, it's probably not going to be in stores. But Hobby Lobby sells the 8.5 by 11 inch paper packs. And you can get tons of stuff um, like we're about to do out of these. You can do your candy bar wrappers, all, all sorts of stuff. You can also do digital paper and print and cut these since you're print and cutting this. Um, or, like I said, unflatten it and do away with the print and cut portion and just cut this uh, emblem out of any pattern paper that you want. 
So this is super simple, super quick. Um, I was asked to make sure that I included projects for kids, so I'm trying to do a little bit of both. Um, our next project, we're going to be using these same papers and these same candies, but it's going to be on a little more um, difficult level, um, for more for the adults. Um, it's going to have a box with it, so but other than that, the kids can still help. You're just going to take a tape runner and put a little bit on each end okay now if you want to do printables you can do them on like the full sheet sticker papers like the UPS mailing labels the full sheet ones I think Avery makes them you can print and cut on those guys and then all you have to do is peel and stick so you won't even need a tape runner if you want to do that you're just gonna to go to the flat side of the candy and line it up so that it's in the center you've got a, the right um, same amount of foil showing on each side and you're just going to stick it and then you're just going to walk that paper around and stick super simple super easy super simple I told you guys not everything would be difficult um, then you're going to take your next piece you're going to do the same thing on the flat side right in the center and we're just gonna wrap and these make great neighbor gifts um, just to pop on their door you don't even have to say who it's from you could do secret Santa's in your neighborhood um, especially with COVID going on uh, a lot of people can't get together so you know you can swing by and just pop them right on their door and walk away so Lots of fun things you can do with these. Uh, you could play the neighborhood get elfed game and, and see who puts what on each other's doors. That's going to be a lot of fun. So, again, just going to do all four pieces. Now, the bags that I'm using, the treat bags that I'm using for this, are the, I think, three, yeah, three by four size. They come in different sizes. I have different sizes I get every year for different things, just in case your candies don't fit. So here's another size. These are 3.75 by 6. And then on the next project, you're going to need what I call pretzel bags. Um, well, they do too. Um, 9.75 by 2.25. So you're going to need some of those if you're going to do all of these. And I still have some thread from the last project on my desk. So you're going to open up your little bag and then you're going to place your candies in. And in this bag they have to go in this way. Now if you want to do the little Tetris moves and do two this way and two this way you can do that but I'm just going to I think I'll put the Merry Christmas down by the stripes now. I want a OCD kicking in. You can put them in any way you want to. Put that green one there and then do the stripe beside it. Then I'm going to do my red one on that side and then this one on this side. Just so it looks pretty any way that you want to. Then we're going to... I like to staple this close so that's what we're going to do. I like to staple this right in the center just so that it's closed and they won't be flopping around while I'm trying to do my second half. Now this is a little bit tall so I want it to come right at the end of that like so. Okay and I can feel my staple in there so I'm going to know about where to staple on this side but before I do that I want to put my ribbons in there. So I'm just going to thread a bell on just for a little extra oomph. And I want to give it enough for a door hanger, but I don't want it to be a massive door hanger. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to tie a knot in it. Again, I made this about 18 inches long. I just want it to be able to go over their doorknob. And then I'm going to trim off my ribbon. And this is where it gets a little tricky, okay? 
just going to place a little bit of tape runner right here and that'll help you hold it too while you um, staple because I like to staple mine in so I'm just going to put some glue runner there and that's going to help everything stick I'm going to place that ribbon into that and this side of the ribbon into that Okay. and now this oh, I didn't get my tape runner low enough make sure you get yours low enough and that's just going to help stick and keep it in place. Okay. I'm just going to fold that over. Catch everything. And now I'm going to staple. Now if you prefer not to staple yours, you could probably glue or whatever. Um, but I'm going to staple into my ribbon. I wish I had brought my ribbon further down. I would advise that you bring your ribbon further down and just staple the ribbon like right there and right here okay and we're going to pretend that my ribbon was that long and I caught it but how cute is that just to hang on the doors super super cute so go ahead and cut your tops you can cut several of those and I cut just a whole sheet of each one of these colors you can see I just have tons of them um, in different papers that way I can use them for all sorts of different projects and it makes it quick and easy. So go ahead, get your file. This is the one-time supporter file. If you what you can get this file with one-time support on Kofi if you do it by midnight. Everybody gets the free file of the snowman candy bars that we did. And if you wait until tomorrow, then you will be ha have to be monthly to get this file. So let's move over to the next file, which is for monthly supporters. I'll catch you there. Okay, guys, here we are with the monthly supporter file for day five. Um, and this is what I call the, I believe, nuggets. Um, they've been around for years, and I just have never uh, done them as a project. I mean, I've done them, but not... Um, put out as a design space file so um, because we used to do these by hand all the time so in the file you're going to have um, a piece of cardstock cut like this you're gonna have your wrappers like this now you can do them as print and cut like I said before on sticker paper um, if you want to do that and then you've got your little labels I was able to get 10 sets out and I thought I had loaded a sheet, a full sheet of sticker paper, Avery mailing labels. Um, but evidently, I ordered, I put in the two halves. But it's still, it's still cut. It still went through. Uh, luckily, it didn't read right there where my break was. But I'm going to show you really quick, again, how, just in case some of you missed it on the previous. You're just going to take your wrapper. If you print and cut, you can print and cut your um, letters on there. You can center them up and do that much easier. But since I already had papers cut, I just decided to use them. So you've got two different ways you can do it. Flatten it all together and make them one color or put in patterns. You're just going to put your sticky on both ends and just wrap it right around just to cover the, the name on there. Then you're going to get the letters. Of course, you're going to get the letters that you need. I like to line mine up with the, which pattern I'm using, if I'm using different patterns like this, and then put my letters on so that I can keep them in order. And then you're just going to place your little sticker right in the center, right on top. Okay? And then you're ready to go. I'm going to set that to the side so I don't lose that. Then you're going to take your cardstock here. This is also super simple, super easy, super quick. You can make tons of these up in advance and package them. They're great to give to nurses, police, firefighters, um, you know, your FedEx, your deliveries guys, your Amazon guys. Don't leave them out this year make sure you 
Give them a little something, your mail guy. You're just going to fold on both those score lines. I'm just going to use my bone folder and give it a good press. And then you're going to open that back up. Now, some don't, but I like to double check and make sure everything is going to fit. And I like to put mine in with a glue dot. And everything fits perfectly in there. Looks great. Okay. So then I'm just going to slide them up. Make sure that you've got them in the right order. You don't want to be misspelling. And where's my dots? There they are. We're just going to put a glue dot on the back of it. And I'm going to place it right at the bottom. And stick that down. Right next to each other. Each one. Some of the papers can make that bow out a little bit, and that's okay. It's going to be perfectly fine. These are great to stick. If you do, um, like for your hairdresser, um, a basket of goodies or cookies and stuff like that, these are great to stick like in there. You can do these at Easter. You can do their names um, instead of believe. You could do, um, there are several of them. We, we've done them at Thanksgiving and do the word thanks. You're just going to lengthen or shorten your tray to the number of chocolates that you're using. Okay. So now we have all of those in there and they're shouldn't go anywhere. Just use a few pop dots and you can find those at scrapbook.com. They're called glue dots. I said pop dots but they're called glue dots. And then you're going to need your pretzel bag that I showed you before and this is the 9.75 by 225. Open. Just slide one out. Just gonna open it up. And here's the fun part. I'm just kind of shimmy it in there. And that's why I like to glue dot it. It just makes things, makes life easier. I'm just going to drop it right in. Plus, when they go to take it out, you want them to be able to get it out. How cute is this? And I have a little tag in the file for you, so you have that. I have some twine. I've had this twine for some time and I haven't used it, so I think I bought it because I wanted the wooden spool it was on. And then I didn't do my project. Just going to get a little bit of twine. And I get extra of this, especially when it has those gold pieces in there because we know they're going to come loose. I'm just going to put this through, maybe. I may have gotten that a little small for this twine. Might have to get another twine. I really wanted to use this color. Let's, let's see if we can skin the cat this way. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. Well, maybe not. Doesn't want to work for me. There we go. Made a mess of it, but I can get it back. It's just going to loop it like so. All right, and I'm going to get a piece of my red ribbon. Just going to cut that off at an angle so it's good and pretty. Hopefully I cut it great. I'm just going to go around the top. I 
we can use a pipe cleaner or a twist tie. Uh, some of your bags will come with a twist tie, some don't. There we go. I'm just going to tie it in a knot. And I may have cut my ribbon too short. Hopefully not. Gonna do my little rabbit bow here. Yep, I cut my ribbon too short. Oops, I'll save that for another project. That's why I always cut longer than I need extra ribbon. I was thinking about putting a bell on here and then I changed my mind. Let's do this the right way. Make it easy. I'm just going to get a small piece of scotch tape. I'm going to twist that and I'm just going to tape it. makes life easier when you do it right. Let's see if we can just start it tightening up and then slide it down. Okay. And I like to knot it so that it stays tight. So we're just going to slip it right off the end. Make it pretty. Okay. So now I have my bow on there, and then I'm just going to come up here with my to and from tag, with my little bit of twine, and knock that off right behind the bow. Oops, slid out of camera view, I apologize. And then I'm just going to trim those off. How super cute is that? So now you've got your to and from, leave, Get them seven little nuggets, and it's all packaged up really nice and sweet. So that completes day five, and those were, I called them boxes yesterday, but they are actually wraps, candy wraps. Um, we've completed those. Let me grab the others just so you guys can get a recap. We did our door hanger ones. Those are our basket ones, or just handout. And then we have our cookies and cream snowman candy bar wraps. I hope you guys enjoyed these tutorials today. And I will catch you for day six. And time allowing, I am probably not going to do day six until Monday. Um, so that I can take a break and get my boxes together. Because I really want to do some boxes for you guys on Monday. And I'm going to need an extra day to do that. So let's count on boxes being on Monday. And we will catch you on YouTube at 7 p.m. for day six. It will be live. You guys have a great day. Uh, have a great rest of the weekend. And I will see you later.